Hey guys, Jacob here, and today I want to show you the biggest change for the Amazon SP API that actually happened overnight. Amazon actually announced that they no longer will be needed the signature to make the request, which makes it extremely easy right now for everyone to make the requests. So as always, I wanted to provide you with the fresh information and the tutorial on how to do the request to Amazon SP API. So I have a sample of a code that will be building really quick, and I'll show you what actually has changed and how you can do it on your own at the moment. The announcement that just happened about one hour ago, so this is very fresh by you watching this, so let me show you here on the screen. So SPPA will no longer require AWS IAM or AWS Signature version 4. And as you know, that was one of the biggest obstacles to actually do the request to Amazon uh, Selling Partner API. I actually cover how to do it in a couple of videos, for example here, where we go and set up everything from scratch this no longer actually is needed. So in this video, I want to show you how to do it right now without setting up uh, the IAM roles and the uh, doing the AW signature version 4. So again, let's read it all together. So starting October 2nd, SPPI will no longer require to use the AWS Identity and Access Management, so IAM or AWS signature version 4. However, SPPI will continue to use the LWA access tokens for each SPPI request. Um, so I'll, I'll show you basically how this works in a, in a moment. Uh, which marketplaces are affected, everything, who is affected, all developers, who will sign uh, before the October 4. What actions are required? The good thing is that actually non-actions are required. So if you are actually running your own app at the moment, you can still do it the way you were doing the request. However, for the future development or for all of you who are trying to do a sample request to Amazon or build the app right now, it's a great time actually. And for all of you who are actually migrating the app from the MWS to SPAPI, this is much simpler, trust me. You don't have to set up the AWS IAM resources, you don't have to complete all of those crazy steps that actually I showed in the tutorial on how to set up the SPAPI. Uh, right now, uh, it's super simple, you just need to create the app in the Seller Central, get the credentials and do a request. So let's do it right now live. All right, so let's actually do a new app and sample request using Python, but it can be any programming language. So we're going to create a new app client. Let's name it YouTube Tutorial October. Let's use the Selling Partner API, pick this for sellers, pick basically what APIs you need. Um, basically, we can take all of them without the PII. Uh, if you're actually trying to get access to PII, um, you can always contact us as well, um, because I know this is a super tough process and we already help uh, a lot of sellers and vendors to, to do it. So for now, uh, let's click no, because otherwise you actually have to provide information to, to Amazon to get those informations. And let's do save and exit. All right, so we have our YouTube tutorial October. Let's go and check the AWS credentials, which are actually needed. So as you see here, we have the client identifier and client secret. Um, uh, we will need both of those in a moment. And we will also need to authorize our application. But let's continue here in a moment. First, let's actually create the script that will do a sample request. So uh, let's use Python. Let's create the virtual environment first. I will be using pip and fast usually. And the biggest game changer is that we will no longer need to use any third party libraries. We'll do directly the request um, to the API with the request library. So let's install the request library and the virtual environment. Let's activate it. Now let's create two files. One is the script.py and second is credentials.py. For the sake of the simplicity, um, obviously, you shouldn't do it uh, on the production environment. I just want to show you how to do it as a sample. Now open our favorite code editor, in my case is a PyCharm. All right, it's all set. We should have our environment ready, activated, and this is the credentials. Now for the credentials, um, we will need the refresh token, LWA, LWA app ID and LWA client secret. And all of those information now we will going to get from here. So first of all here, client identifier, this is the app ID, client secret, this is here and refresh token. Let's go here, authorize. Now for the different marketplaces, obviously you have different versions. Let's Pick the alpha, the US marketplace, alpha is up, let's copy it. Remember to save it now. 
Let's paste it over there. Now we have all of the credentials ready. Now let's jump to the script and I'll show you how easy it is. All right, we'll be using those libraries, requests, early parse, data time, JSON, and of course we need to import our credentials. Now, the first step is to get the LWS access token using the Seller Central app credentials. The token will be valid for one hour until it expires. So it's always important to implement this logic. So we always have the valid token. Now let's uh, do it. So we'll be using the request library and we'll do a post request to this uh, endpoint. This is basically endpoint which will uh, return the access token. And we need to pass all of the credentials that we actually have stored and put the grunt type to the refresh token. Now as a response, we'll, have, we'll get the refresh token from here. We can actually print it to, to see. All right, we got our refresh token. The next point is to get the endpoint for North America. So in my case, um, this is the one. And obviously if you're on different marketplaces, you should use the different, to uh, different endpoints. Now um, you should also take the marketplace ID. So first one is the link and then the marketplace ID. You have different marketplace IDs here in the documentation. And for the US one is this one. So if you go type US, this is the one we are using. Now we'll be downloading orders in this very simple tutorial. So this is the documentation. This is how the actual request should look like. So we have this get orders file zero orders. This is basically our URL. And as we see here, this is the get request with the query parameters that we will have to pass as well together with the, with the URL. So I'll put it here so you know. And now for the query params, this is the, uh, th those are the request params. We'll need the marketplace IDs uh, with the marketplace ID created after, let's take last 30 days in a ISO format and now the actual request. So this is how we do the request. Um, and before that, you had those libraries that you had to actually, those were like kind of wrappers on the API. They had all of that built in and so many of you actually requested this to do just in Python. So I'm just dropping this value bump uh, today. You can see how to do the request without any external libraries because obviously when you're building this on a production, you don't want to rely on a third party uh, wrappers or libraries, right? So this is how we do it. You have at the endpoint, and then you are adding the um, so this is the endpoint for the orders, as I showed you, and now the query parameters, and we can use this nice library which will basically encode query parameters to the URL. As a header, you need to provide the access token which we already got, and again, it's valid for one hour. And in the end, let's uh, dump this here, um, JSON dumps, and let's have these orders.json and have it printed nicely. All right, let's type Python script.py. And as you see, we actually retrieved our orders from the API. And from there on, you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, you can put it to the Google Sheets, you can put it to your dashboarding solution, basically everything. And again, that was not so hard. I'll make sure to include this code in the description so you can actually do it on your own if you cannot follow the tutorial. And that was that simple, guys. And if you have any issues, let me know in the comments. I think this is really a game changer. And I think that that was a great thing that Amazon did. And by the end of the video, I just want to simply let you know about Delta Logic. We are helping hundreds of sellers, vendors, agencies to build their own Amazon tools or any other marketplace tools. No matter if it's a next SaaS tool for Amazon sellers that you can sell or if it's your internal automation tool, we can help you guys. If you encounter a problem, that you cannot solve or the app that you cannot build on your own or you have some bad experience from past working with freelancers or other agency, let us know. We'll be happy to help you. And thanks a lot for watching, guys. And as always, I see you in the next one.